Hello everyone, my name is Yoshimi, and welcome back to the channel. This is going to be a long video, so I'll keep it brief. Tonight on the channel, I'm covering the first part of the horror game Lost Media Iceberg, created by Iceberg creator and friend of the show, Equiret. This iceberg is 300 plus entries long, and covers Lost Media, particularly in the horror genre of video games. This includes cancelled games, cut content, lost horror video games, and more. That being said, a lot of the topics on this iceberg could have their own separate videos made on them, so I'll only be briefly explaining each entry to the best of my ability, while still keeping the video engaging and entertaining. If I get something wrong or don't cover a topic as in-depth as you would have liked, just know that I apologize and try to cover everything as in-depth yet as simple to understand as possible. There will also be some entries in this video that don't have any footage or concept art related to them, so there will be some random gameplay b-roll as well to fill in those parts. Without further ado, sit back, get cozy, and relax as we dive in and cover some of the deepest, darkest horror game lost media. Starting off Tier 1, we have Silent Hills. Silent Hills was a cancelled game in the Silent Hill franchise meant to serve as the first new entry in the series in several years, as well as a reboot of the franchise. The game was announced through a mysterious demo known as PT, or Playable Teaser, appearing as a download on the PlayStation Store on August 12, 2014. In the teaser, the player controls an unnamed protagonist, who is tasked with exploring a seemingly haunted suburban home. During the demo, disturbing occurrences begin to happen inside the house as the player experiences terrifying events while solving strange, cryptic puzzles. As the player completes each loop around the playable area of the house, a hostile ghost by the name of Lisa begins to hunt the player, resetting the loop if they are caught. After the final puzzle is complete, the player escapes the house, finally revealing that the playable teaser was for the upcoming Silent Hills, a project that was to be directed by Metal Gear developer Hideo Kojima, as well as Hellboy and Pan's Labyrinth director Guillermo del Toro, with Norman Rita starring in the main role, and even acclaimed manga artist Junji Ito planning to be involved in the game's development in some way. However, after the release of PT on the PlayStation Store and the fast, widespread critical acclaim the demo received, game developer Konami removed the demo from the PlayStation Store sometime later and made it impossible to re-download, thus simultaneously cancelling Silent Hills. This led to heavy criticism from the gaming community, with many gaming news outlets reporting extensively on the cancellation of Silent Hills. As Silent Hills was unjustly cancelled by Konami, both the main game and PT are some of the most notable pieces of lost media, serving as not only a blow to the once legendary horror series it tried to revive, but to the gaming community as a whole. Resident Evil 3.5 Hookman version Resident Evil 3.5 Hookman version refers to the partially found beta versions of Resident Evil 4. You see, Resident Evil 4 was going to be a much different game from the one we know and love today. Originally slated to be released on the PlayStation 2 in 2001, Resident Evil 4 saw a troubled development cycle, with conflicts within the writing staff causing the game to change several times. The first beta depicts the game's protagonist, Leon S. Kennedy, exploring an airship of some type and fighting a strange fog creature, with it being alleged that the story would center around Leon being infected and having supernatural powers of some sort. This beta was deemed too action-oriented for the game's fourth entry, and many of its assets were instead given to the first Devil May Cry. Later on at E3 2003, another build of RE4 was shown again, this time having a stronger focus on paranormal and supernatural elements similar to Silent Hill. The trailer featured Leon in an infested mansion, still having his strange powers from the previous build, this time fighting a new creature with a hook, referred to as the Hook Man in one video. While this was seen by many as the most polished version of Resident Evil 4 they had seen so far, Capcom scrapped the project and eventually created and displayed the Resident Evil 4 we know today at the following year's E3. Various pieces of footage of both betas are public and now available on YouTube, however, the playable version of either build has never surfaced. A fan recreation of one of the betas was available for download on the internet at some point, but it has since been made unavailable. Agartha 
Agartha was a cancelled survival horror game made for the Sega Dreamcast with the planned release date of late 1999. The premise of the game is said to have followed a man named Kirk and goes as follows. During the winter of 1929 in a Romanian village that was partially destroyed by a landslide that occurred during a mysterious earthquake, a subterranean city exists called Agartha. This is where evil is being kept prisoner and is desperate to escape. Kirk, the human hero, will encounter a series of characters from villages, the living dead, fanatics from an evil sect, monsters, demons, soldier monks, priests, archangels, and the sentinel who is the ultimate personification of evil. As Kirk, you can decide to save as many innocent people as possible or to trigger the arrival of chaos on earth. As Kirk's morals waver between good and evil, this ambiguity changes the aims of the adventure and the narration of the story. It can be derived from this premise that the game would feature moral choices that would change the game's narrative and outcomes, but gameplay and mechanics remain unclear. However, online capabilities were mentioned with team deathmatch and team play mode supposedly going to be implemented. The game was going to be funded by Sega and developed by French developer No Cliché, who were acquired by Sega in 1997. The earliest mentions of Agartha come from gaming outlets reporting on Agartha, mentioning that it would be similar to the style of Resident Evil. Small screenshots of the game were also provided showing that the game would most likely take place in a snow-covered setting. As the game continued into development, the original 1999 release date was pushed further back to 2001, which coincided with Sega's decision to cancel the production of the Dreamcast, with Sega announcing that no more Dreamcast consoles would be manufactured, but all games in development prior would be completed. Despite this, Agartha never reached that point in development, and developer No Cliché ceased development and eventually ceased altogether. Despite Agartha being a relatively obscure cancelled survival horror game, its legacy does still live on in some way amongst lost media enthusiasts, with video game website Unseen64 publishing an article in 2008 documenting Agartha and what little information is known about it. Unseen 64 also acquired 15 minutes of early in-game footage displaying an eerie mood and atmosphere, as well as the graphical quality of the game, but no playable demo was made available at all. However, about a decade later in 2018, the game's E3 2002 demo was found on an eBay auction and its contents dumped online, thus showing us a glimpse into a survival horror game that never was. Sadness Production Material Sadness was a survival horror game that was going to be developed by Polish developer Nibis for the Nintendo Wii. The game was promoted as a unique and realistic take on the survival horror genre, with an emphasis on psychological horror, featuring black and white graphics, and unique gameplay mechanics that would take full advantage of the Wii's motion controls, such as using the Wii remote to swing knives and torches, as well as to throw lassos or ropes over walls. From what we know, Sadness would take place in a pre-World War I Russia, and would follow Maria Lengel a Victorian era aristocrat who is tasked with protecting her son, Alexander, after their train derails in the countryside. Alexander is blinded by the accident and would begin to exhibit strange behavior that worsens over the course of the game. The game's enemies and characters would be inspired by Slavic mythology and would feature creatures such as werewolves and the Lyco, a one-eyed humanoid creature who would take the appearance of a skinny old woman and is said to be the embodiment of all evil. The game's plot itself would focus on the player's choice, featuring 10 possible endings. Sadness was first announced by Nibis in March 2006, and a live-action concept trailer for the game was released shortly after. However, from 2007 on, many gaming outlets criticized Nibis for failing to produce any kind of evidence of the game, such as gameplay, trailers, or even just screenshots. Heavy speculation that the game had fallen into vaporware due to Nibis parting ways with the co-developer Frontline Studios, and the game being delayed from its original Q4 2007 release date to 2009. Despite responses that the game's development was still underway, Way, Nibis failed to meet several deadlines, and disputes with other developers assisting Nibis with the game led Sadness to be cancelled, with Nibis being absent from E3 2009 and quietly missing the 2009 release window. Left 4 Dead 2 Cabin in the Woods DLC the Cabin in the Woods DLC refers to a lost campaign for Left 4 Dead 2 based on the horror movie of the same name, Cabin in the Woods. The campaign was meant to be a tie-in for the film. However, due to the movie's several delays and financial struggles, the campaign was eventually scrapped. According to Left 4 Dead 2's writer Chet Valziek, both Joss Whedon and Drew Goddard had approached Valve about the idea after playing the game. Allegedly, the campaign was going to be based around the movie and somewhat follow the film's plot, allowing players to play through and explore both the upstairs cabin 
cabin and the underground facility. With it even being alleged that you would be able to fight the monsters from the movie, though it remains unclear if new special infected types would be implemented or not. However, despite plans and enthusiasm for the DLC campaign, several problems with Cabin in the Woods financing and distribution led to the eventual cancellation of the campaign. All is not lost though, as the special infected from the Left 4 Dead series do make cameos in the final film. Doom 4 Doom 4, like the name suggests, refers to the original planned fourth entry in the long-running legendary first-person shooter series. The game was planned to be released for the PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, and Microsoft Windows until it was cancelled sometime in late 2011. The game was to be developed by id Software and published by Bethesda Softworks. It is unknown where the game would have fit on the Doom timeline due to the game not serving as a direct sequel to Doom 3, but also not being a reboot of the franchise. id Software co-founder John Carmack confirmed that QuakeCon 2007 that a new Doom game was in development, but no other details were revealed at that time. It was not until May 2008 where Doom 4 was officially announced, however no set release date had been provided. Doom 4 had also been surprisingly absent from QuakeCon 2009, but it was announced that more information would be present at the following year's convention. Around this time, id Software was also working on another first person shooter titled Rage that released in 2010 to mixed reviews and a disappointing launch, leading many to question the future future of Doom 4 with the game being cancelled later in 2011. Sometime in 2012, screenshots and gameplay of Doom 4 were leaked, revealing some of the game's plot and mechanics. Not much is ultimately known about Doom 4's premise, only that the game would take place on Earth after a demon invasion provoked by the Union Aerospace Corporation. It is alleged that the game would take place in New York in the year 2038, and would follow a human survivor who meets up with a resistance aimed at taking down the forces of hell. The gameplay would feature standard first person shooter elements elements that Doom is known for, with modern elements similar to games like Call of Duty, as well as some concepts that were eventually repurposed for Doom 2016, like the glory kill system, light weapon customization, and more. When asked about the leaks, id Software neither confirmed nor denied that they were legitimate. A pre-alpha build existed for the game at some point, featuring a lot of these single player and even some multiplayer maps in a playable state, with footage of this build being available on YouTube. However, at the time of writing, an actual playable download of the game still remains lost. Call of Cthulhu, Beyond the Mountains of Madness, and Destiny's End Call of Cthulhu, Destiny's End, and Beyond the Mountains of Madness were two cancelled sequels for the first person horror action game Call of Cthulhu Dark Corners of the Earth, planned for Microsoft Windows and Xbox, and to be developed by British game dev Head First Productions and published by Bethesda Softworks. The sequel, Destiny's End, would feature two teenage characters, Jacob and Emily, and would take place in the town of Innsmouth like the first game, but would instead be presented in a third person perspective unlike Dark Corners of the Earth. The game's plot would revolve around Jacob having disturbing nightmares that somehow link back to the town of Innsmouth, and would task both Jacob and Emily with uncovering the truth behind the nightmares and how Jacob is linked to Innsmouth's dark and mysterious past. Details state that the game would feature a combat and exploration system similar to Silent Hill, as well as being designed to be played cooperatively at any time, allowing for instant split screen to be enabled when a second controller was inserted into the system. The player characters would also have different sets of skills and attributes, like Jacob being well skilled in hand-to-hand -hand combat or Emily having psychic abilities. It is also stated that the game would feature a unique sanity system that would affect the character's abilities and the world around them if separated for too long. The second planned sequel, Beyond the Mountains of Madness, would be more similar to the first entry, being another first-person adventure game, this time involving an archaeologist named Robert Naples, who would embark on a journey to recover a stolen artifact, fighting Nazis and various monsters in the H.P. Lovecraft mythos in an attempt to stop the Nazis from uncovering the Elder City and harnessing its power for evil. The game was to feature a large cast of supporting characters who would either aid or attempt to stop Robert Naples' quest. It was stated that gameplay would be fairly open-ended, allowing players to choose how they handled situations, either stealthily or going in loud. Beyond the Mountains of Madness would also feature a sanity system, which would affect Naples greatly when faced with an unexplainable event or horrifying monster. Despite the interesting and honestly cool gameplay concepts, neither saw the light of day as Head First Productions dissolved in 2006. Hellraiser NES 
Hellraiser NES was a cancelled, unauthorized video game from 1990 for the Nintendo Entertainment System. The game was said to be developed by Color Dreams, a developer infamous for making unauthorized video games very poor quality. You see, game developers who wanted to distribute a game on Nintendo's consoles would need to pay to have the game evaluated by Nintendo themselves and given an official seal of approval. However, Color Dreams decided not to go through with this option, whether it be not wanting to pay Nintendo or out of fear of rejection. Color Dreams would instead bypass this by using unique cartridges to get around the SNES's lockout chip. Color Dreams decided to make a game based on the 1987 supernatural horror film after one of the founders, Dan Lawton, saw the film and enjoyed it. Lawton somehow convinced his partners and Hellraiser's movie studio to acquire the licensing for the movie for around $35,000 to $50,000. The game was said to be developed on an improved version of the Wolfenstein 3D engine, though this is commonly disputed as Wolfenstein 3D did not release until 1992. Lawton was aware that the NES couldn't handle the Wolf 3D engine, so he sought the help of an engineer named Ron Risley to develop an entirely new NES cartridge just to run the game. Known as the Super Cartridge, it contained a 780 processor, an additional 4 megabytes of RAM, and was also capable of intercepting the NES processor's ROM and RAM to manipulate video in real time, essentially allowing the game to switch colors between scans of the TV in real time and increase the effective number of colors on the screen. While the cartridge itself allegedly worked fine, the palette switching effect wasn't working as intended as it didn't switch between colors fast enough. The Hellraiser game would consist of the player being trapped in the Lemurchan's puzzle box from the film. While playing, the player could find ways to manipulate the outside of the puzzle box in order to solve it with the Cenobites to interfere with the player's attempts to escape the puzzle box. Despite the interesting concepts for the game, the high cost to produce the super cartridge meant that the game would also have to be sold at a higher price than normal licensed games and the fact that many major retail retailers refused to distribute unlicensed games as Nintendo would cease business with set retailers. With a mix of these factors, as well as it supposedly costing $2 million to develop the game, Hellraiser NES was cancelled and Color Dreams went out of business. A couple months before the game was cancelled, gaming magazines such as Electronic Gaming Monthly, GamePro, and even Nintendo Power would advertise the game, though no gameplay screenshots were shown. As it stands, no builds of the game publicly exist and no known assets exist other than one screenshot of the game's title screen. A Nightmare on Elm Street NES A Nightmare on Elm Street NES is a 1990 action platforming game based on the horror movie series of the same name. The game was developed by Donkey Kong Country and Banjo-Kazooie developer Rare. The gameplay focused on the player traveling to different locations on Elm Street to find and destroy the bones of the movie's antagonist, Freddy Krueger, as it is the only way to truly kill him. The player would have to keep an eye on their sleep meter, which when depleted would send the player to the dream world, where Freddy and other enemies could attack them. The only way of the player defending themselves are dream tokens that can be collected and could transform the player into things like wizards and ninjas. The game went through several changes and retoolings throughout its development cycle and was possibly meant to be a more ambitious, different kind of game. According to an advertisement for the game featured in the issue of Nintendo Power from 1998, the game's original premise allowed players to actually control Freddy Krueger himself, with the goal being killing the teens who were attempting to destroy his bones. However, later in another 1989 issue of Nintendo Power, new screenshots were shown with the player character now being an Elm Street teen. Two more screenshots of the prototype were also featured in this issue, one of what would become the title screen and one of Freddy fighting a group of kids. The presence of these images, most of which include assets that would be used in the finished product such as the title screen, seemed to imply that development had reached the point where the game's prototype build was mostly playable, despite allegedly being retooled by LJN in 1989. No official statement regarding the restructure was ever given, but it could have been due to a couple reasons, such as Nintendo's rather strict reputation for producing family-friendly content at the time, as well as the financial failures of similar games like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Halloween game adaptations for the Atari 2600, with many retailers at the time refusing to stock those games due to the killers being playable. Aside from screenshots and articles that mention the prototype, very little information exists. It is theorized that a Rare or LGAN employee may may have a playable copy of the original game, though the common consensus is that no such playable version ever existed. Evil Farming Game 
The evil farming game is a rather popular topic that has been covered extensively and has been debunked, so I'll keep it brief. Essentially, the evil farming game is a name given to a rumored farming simulation game similar to Stardew Valley or Harvest Moon, with the premise revolving around the player character murdering their wife and hiding her body from the police, all while still tending to the farm in the game. The evil farming game was first mentioned by Reddit user Sparta213 in 2016, with a post asking if anyone remembers a violent farming simulator with the app for mentioned premise. This post gained so much attention it spawned a five year long search for the game and even its own subreddit where people would gather to share information they had found. There was a game with a kind of similar plot known as Moira in 2013, but it is not a farming sim and more so an experimental video game experience with some similarities like a bloodied farmer and a missing woman. Despite the extensive search into the seemingly lost horror game, it was later discovered in 2021 that the game never actually existed. You see, somehow the community searching for the game have found a clip from a 2015 stream of Earth Defense Force by Vine Sauce Joel, in which he describes a hypothetical plot for a game pretty much identical to the plot of the evil farming game. After this revelation, it was revealed that Sparta213 had misremembered the whole situation, having used to fall asleep to Vine Sauce streams and thus mistaking the Vine Sauce Joel clip for an actual game. Luigi's Mansion Space World Demo The Luigi's Mansion Space World Demo refers to a specific tech demo of the aforementioned GameCube launch title that debuted at Space World in 2000, and contains several features not seen in the final game. These unique features include the Poltergust 3000 that Luigi uses to vacuum up ghosts featured a different, more rectangular appearance in the tech demo. It has a meter on the side and four wheels on the bottom. The Game Boy Horror in the bottom right corner of the screen has a timer in the tech demo, rather than the totals of collected coins in the full release of the game. The mansion's layout is much different. Several doors are boarded shut, most likely due to the fact that the game was still a work in progress. Some doors are also placed differently than in the final game, and some rooms have different furniture or furniture arrangements. Several ghosts either did not make it into the final game or were changed in minor ways. One ghost that did not make it into the final game was the chef ghost that was supposed to be in the kitchen. There's also ghosts unofficially named bashers in the tech demo that would appear behind Luigi and scare him, cutting his max health down to 50 temporarily. Lastly, many ghosts from the beta had their textures or colors changed. The the disc that the game was on was very similar, the only difference being the position that Luigi was in. Aside from that, it's possible that the beta may be contained on some other discs. There is an overheat meter that slowly fills up while vacuuming, similar in appearance to the element meter in the final version. If the meter fills up all of the way, Luigi will immediately stop vacuuming and fall over. Coins were the only currency shown in the demo. They also had a different appearance. They were blank, upright, and rotated. Other lost demos of Luigi's Mansion also exist, like another time demo seen in Space World 2001 that was identical to the Japanese release of the game, as well as an E3 2001 demo that is pretty much identical to the final release. As of the time of writing the script, none of the two demos shown off at E3 2001 and Space World 2000 have been leaked or have resurfaced to the public, and all that has surfaced for them are trailers for the demos and screenshots taken from both events. Alan Wake 2 2010 Demo Alan Wake 2 is the long-awaited and highly anticipated sequel to Remedy Entertainment's Alan Wake series. This entry refers to a prototype version of Alan Wake 2 created shortly after Alan Wake's release in 2010 that was meant to be shown to potential publishers. The prototype was said to include new gameplay mechanics and enemies that was pitched to Microsoft. However, they were not interested in a sequel at the time and instead tasked Remedy with creating a new IP which became Quantum Break. However, we did eventually get Alan Wake 2 in 2023 which was met with critical acclaim. Allison Road Allison Road is an unreleased first person survival horror game developed by Lilith Limited, and was meant to be the spiritual successor to P.T. The gameplay would have been fairly identical to that of P.T., with an unknown protagonist exploring an unfamiliar townhouse and solving puzzles throughout. The game was planned to be released in 2016, but the game's cancellation was announced on the official Twitter account in June of that year. Later in August, the game's creator, Christian Kessler, announced that production on Allison Road would resume, though there would be no updates on the game since then, with Kessler seemingly just moving on to work as a concept designer in the movie industry. A 14 minute gameplay demonstration video does exist, though it was specifically created just to show off the gameplay as to not reveal any of the story, though no playable version of the game has been released at this time. Chucky Wanna Play 
Chucky Wanna Play is a formerly lost cancelled stealth action game based on the horror movie franchise Child's Play. The game had been announced in 2011 and was planned to be developed by Tick Games for PC and consoles. The game would allow players to take on the role of the titular serial killer possessed doll and massacre random NPCs in a number of ways. It is unknown what the plot would have been at the time as it seems to have simply been just a slasher game. A Kickstarter for Chucky Wanna Play was launched in 2012 by the developers, with them already having five hundred thousand dollars and the rights to the game but needed another nine hundred and twenty five thousand dollars in order to complete the game the kickstarter ultimately failed only reaching five hundred and eighty five dollars with only 19 backers thus leading to the game to be cancelled in february 2023 a user under the name of riley 5411 found a playable prototype of the game and uploaded it to the internet archive stating that they had discovered it on an xbox 36 dev kit eric harris's doom wads possibly some of the most infamous Doom Wads and pieces of lost media in general. The Eric Harris Doom Wads are a number of custom levels for Doom and Doom 2 created by Eric Harris, one of the perpetrators of the Columbine High School Massacre in 1999, in which him and another student, Dylan Klebold, entered their high school on April 20th and murdered 15 of their classmates in what is still hailed as one of the deadliest school shootings in American history. The two perpetrators were obsessed with video games like Doom, and Eric Harris made a number of different wads for the game that are found, such as State Killer, Bricks, Fight Me, and UAC Labs. However, not all of Eric Harris's wads have been found, with the most infamous and mysterious wad being simply known as RealDoom.wad, which was advertised on Harris's website and in other wads, but has never resurfaced to this day. In the 11,000 page Columbine report, it is mentioned that Eric Harris had created a wad that was a recreation of Columbine High School, with the rumor being that RealDoom.wad is the Columbine High School map, though the wad is still currently lost and no known downloads exist at this time. Polybius Polybius is an urban myth and creepypasta that details the story of an alleged real-life rare arcade machine from the 1980s that is supposedly haunted. Players would report hearing a woman crying after playing it, seeing deformed faces in their peripherals, having terrible nightmares, and would even physically cause them to feel sick. According to an owner of an arcade at the time, men in suits would come in to collect reports of the game's database. Because of this, it was speculated that it was a government created machine ready to test on the public. Polybius is extremely popular in not only internet horror circles but in video game culture as a whole, with extensive videos, fan games, and even an excellent documentary from YouTube user Ahoy all serving as a means to bring Polybius from old world internet legend to life. Attack of the Killer Rabbids from Outer Space Attack of the Killer Rabbids from Outer Space was a first person shooter planned to be developed by Ubisoft Montpellier in 2011. The game was to serve as both a launch title for the Wii U and a horror spin-off to the extremely popular Raving Rabbids series, which as many of you know is primarily a family-oriented children's game series. The game would be similar to various other first-person shooters and would test the player with killing as many rabbits as possible, and would use a variety of weapons, including various standard firearms, an electricity gun, and even a buzzsaw launcher. The game would also feature multiplayer options with four-player co-op similar to horde shooters like Left 4 Dead. Even though the game was originally planned as a rabid spin-off and Ubisoft enjoyed the idea, they felt that a violent and gory entry in the series would not be well received. So the name was changed to Killer Freaks from Outer Space, with rabbits being changed to Freaks, which would have a more reptilian-like design but still kind of shared some of the same traits as the rabbits. Early footage and trailers for the game would receive positive reviews. However, the devs were not satisfied with development, with one major issue being that Freaks were too small to see, causing players to constantly have to look towards the ground in order to shoot. Because of this, and the game's fast pace, which they felt would not work well for the Wii U, Killer Freaks from Outer Space was eventually scrapped, and many of its mechanics and assets reworked into another Ubisoft horror game, Zombie U. Various screenshots, trailers, and concept art for Killer Freaks from Outer Space exist online, but anything else about the game remains lost. Dino Crisis Game Boy Color Dino Crisis was a popular survival horror series developed by Capcom and released for the PlayStation 1 in 1999. The game was similar in gameplay and premise to Resident Evil and would revolve around a spec ops team sent to investigate a research facility on a remote island only to find that the facility staff have been killed and the place has been overrun by dinosaurs. It was one of my personal favorite games growing up and really scratches that dinosaur horror itch. The entry refers to a cancelled Game Boy Color port for the game being developed by British studio M4 LTD. Gaming news site IGN had spoke with the developers who stated that Dino Crisis GBC would be a top 
top-down adventure game unlike the PlayStation counterpart, and would not see completion until Q4 of 2000. Not much is known about this top-down version of Dino Crisis, but it is believed that it would be reworked into Resident Evil Gaiden, a top-down spin-off for Capcom's Resident Evil series released for the GBC in 2001. Another version of Dino Crisis GBC was also in development, and details about it can be found on Unseen 64, as well as the Spanish websites Vandal and Dino Crisis Wiki. The game was reported to be developed by a different studio, and more details about this version of the game are provided, including some presumed sprites and screenshots that were leaked online. However, the sources of these details and screenshots are still unknown. The game was not to be a top-down adventure, but would instead use static backgrounds and text sequences to convey its gameplay and story. Dino Crisis GBC would feature 7 maps and 100 rooms in total, and would feature 4 playable characters all from the original game. It was also stated that the game would have 5 types of dinosaurs, including the Tyrannosaurus Rex, Velociraptor, Pterodon, and 2 unspecified dinos. A full design document for the game was released. Petscop Petscop is an ARG that made its debut on YouTube based around a formerly lost fictional game known as Petscop. The series seems like it would just be another YouTube Let's Play series, but in fact, it holds much darker secrets. The main character, Paul, finds the game Petscop and begins to explore around. At first, it looks to be an incomplete game, but the physical copy he was given had a note that led him to finding secret levels and maps in the game. As his exploration deepens, he discovers that Petscop wasn't meant to be played by the general public. It was targeted for specifically one horrific person. Finally, Paul ends up disappearing altogether. But his Let's Play series continues on. Petscop is not a real game for the PS1 and never was, but if there was an actual playable version like the one seen in the series, it has not yet been released to the public. And ending tier 1, we have Twisted Metal Black 2 Harbor City. Twisted Metal Black 2 Harbor City was the planned sequel to the darkest entry in the legendary car combat series, Twisted Metal Black. Though the sequel was never officially announced, details of the game were actually revealed in another Twisted Metal entry, Twisted Metal Head-On Extra Twisted Edition. The plan for Harbor City was to greatly expand and interconnect each level with hopes to feature one complete world rather than standalone levels like in previous entries. Another feature new to Twisted Metal would be gameplay outside of car combat, allowing the player to engage in more personal fights similar to that of GTA, but with more of an emphasis on multiplayer deathmatches. Four levels of Harbor City can be found and played in the extra twisted edition of Head On without any kind of plot or the aforementioned interconnectivity bundled under the name Twisted Metal Lost. A sort of urban legend-esque reason for the cancellation of Harbor City is also found here, stating that six key members of the development team were killed in a plane crash with the project being scrapped shortly after. However, no real evidence of this supposed plane crash exists, and many believe it is to be a hoax meant to fit the already creepy vibe of Twisted Metal Black. And there you have it. Part 1 of the Horror Game Lost Media Iceberg. I hope you all enjoyed it, and thank you so much for watching through to the end. Next time, I will be covering Tiers 2 and 3, which will most likely be out in the next couple of weeks or so. Then, I will release the next entries every 1-2 to two videos so that my channel isn't just iceberg content. I want to give a big thanks again to Equirep for creating this iceberg, and for including links to these entries as well. I also want to thank you again for watching, and I hope you all enjoyed the rest of the series. This has been Yoshimi, and have a good night.